Hello, welcome to Learners Academy. This is Mona Bhatia and uh, today's poem is Have You Ever Seen? The author of this poem is not known and uh, this poem is a perfect example of pun. Many words in English language have more than one meaning. The poet is using pun in the poem and he's creating an amusing effect. So let's have a look at the poem now. The poem is Have You Ever Seen? Have you ever seen a sheet on a river bed? Now poet is asking if anyone has seen a sheet on a river bed. As we generally use a sheet on a bed, but the river bed means the base of the river. So here we have a pun or a single hair from a hammer's head. Now hammer also has a head like we do have, but we have hair on our head. So he's asking, does it also have a hair on single hair on a hammer's head? Now, in the third line, has the foot of a mountain any toes? Now, foot of the mountain means the base of the mountain. Since in a, uh, we have foot and we have toes on our foot, so uh, this doesn't mean that the foot of the mountain will also have toes. So he's trying to make it very funny. Now, uh, the fourth line has, and is there a pair of garden hose? A uh, hose means a pair of stocking or tights. It is always called pair. So, uh, and the garden hose is a flexible tube that is used to water the plants, or uh, uh, the hose is also used to put out the fire. All right. So now the poet is trying to uh, ask if there is a pair of garden hose. So the hose which is worn as a as a tight or a stocking may have a pair but a, a garden hose doesn't have a pair now the next line is does the needle ever wink its eyes or uh, he asks if the eyes of a needle can wink see we uh, when we close one eye it's called a winking all right uh, so the needle also does have a eye the hole from which we take the thread out is the needle eye of the needle so it cannot wink its eyes so he's trying to bring that thing into your mind now next line is why doesn't the wing of a building fly so the uh, wings generally they help a bird or um, this uh, what do you call a bat to fly so he's asking the wing wing is uh, here the wing is a branch of a building all right so the poet is asking does the wing of a building fly so it's like trying to again uh, create a funny uh, image in your mind can you tickle the ribs of a parasol what is a rib rib is actually curved bone in the torso which protects the heart and lungs it's the skeleton now the parasol also parasol is an umbrella umbrella also has a ribs that is a skeleton that the wires that uh, keeps the cloth intact so uh, now he's asking can you tickle the ribs of a parasol so when you uh, uh, the ribs uh, when you tickle the ribs we generally have a you know uh, it's a it gives a ticklish feeling but when you uh, tickle the ribs of a parasol it will not respond to the tickle so now or open the trunk of a tree at all so when um, so when uh, the now the trunk is a has two meaning one is a trunk of a car that is dicky for storage and also the main body of the tree or a woody stem is also called the trunk so he's asking the question um, or open the trunk of a tree at all now we can open the trunk of a tree we cannot open the trunk of a tree at all all right we can open the dicky but we cannot open the trunk of the tree now the next line is are the teeth of a rake ever going to bite now the rake also has got teeth you know what is a rake a rake is a gardening tool uh, which has got teeth like structure and it is used to collect dry leaves or garbage from the garden so now the rake also has got teeth and the but it cannot bite like our teeth 
the poet is asking if those will ever bite anyone now we have another pun here have the hands of a clock any left or right do you have hands so one hand is the left hand the other one is the right one so uh, hands of the clock that is the minute hands and the right uh, hours hand they do not have any left or right right so he is trying to create a funny image in our mind now the next is um, can the garden plot be deep and dark now what is a plot plot is basically a piece of land so garden plot means a uh, land which is used a piece of land which is used for gardening and the another meaning for plot is is um, basically an evil or a wicked plan that is you that you make which is deep and dark so now he is asking can the garden plot be deep and dark all right um then he then ask if the um and what is the sound of the birch's bark now uh, so in the poem uh, what would be the sound of a birch's birch's means birch means tree tree has got the bark that is the outer skin is called the bark means the bark of a tree so uh, and there is another bark that is the bark of dogs all right so the uh, that is all uh, that's actually a sound but the trees bark will not make any sound so in this poem the poet has used pun means when words of same spellings or pronunciations are used in such a way that they convey more than one meaning so then the figure of speech is called pun this whole poem is a good example of pun there's only one figure of speech here now we'll move on to the next topic have you ever seen this poem um in this poem the poet has used basically four figures of speech in the entire poem uh this poem defines the word pun uh which is used throughout the poem pun means the words of same spellings that are used in such a way that they convey more than one meaning every word has a pun in the poem every line has a pun in the poem uh you can see the underlined words all the underlined words that you can see here they have got two meanings or more than two meanings all right so you have to read the poem to understand the other meaning too now the uh, next uh, uh figure of speech that i see here is alliteration and i have all highlighted all those letters that are repeated in the same sentence with red color in the second line you can see hair hammer head so uh, when the letter is rep repeated for better poetic effect to bring about uh, musical tone in the poem so that figure of speech is called alliteration now you can also observe that i have highlighted few uh, lines here three lines in bold uh, this is to show you that these uh, lines have got personification in them uh, personification means when an inanimate thing is compared to a person in respect of some quality that figure of speech is called personification in the first uh, highlighted line has the foot of a mountain any toes now here as if the foot of the mountain is the mountain of uh, is the foot of a human being having toes so it is um, personified the foot of the mountain is personified uh, does the needle ever wink its eye now the needle uh, has been personified in fact it's it has got an eye and which is personified whether it can wink all right now the third personification that i, I can um, see here is are the teeth of a rake ever going to bite uh, so the teeth of the rake have been given the human quality of biting and he's asking a question whether it can bite all right so these are the personification in this poem the entire poem is in interrogation figure of speech in this figure of speech um, an idea or a fact is emphasized by using a question instead of a statement but there is no need uh, there is no uh, requirement of an answer the answer is normally in no it is just to ask you uh, that uh, 
whether you find some um, thought in this or you want to ponder over this and uh, here it is basically pun so you have to have a good laugh at it all right uh, that's all about the figures of speech the next topic is critical appreciation let's go to that in the critical appreciation we have to address five topics the first is uh, the title and the title of this poem is have you ever seen and is addressed to the reader in a rhetorical question manner the second topic is poet the poet of this poem is not known and uh, but we can uh, assume that after reading the poem we can you know make out that he or she is well versed in English language and as she has used uh, lots of homograms in the poem and uh, she is used to have a lot of fun with English language and the rhyme scheme of the poem is ABAB now the next topic for critical appreciation is figures of speech and the poet has used basically four figures of speech in the entire poem uh, the whole poem each and every line has got interrogation each and every line has got pun in it apart from these two a uh, poet has used a personification also as if in the line has the foot of a mountain any toe uh, the mount foot of the mountain is personified and are the teeth of a rake ever going to bite so the teeth of the rake have been personified uh, now uh, having said this uh, we also have alliteration in the poem uh, like in the line or a single hair on a hammer's head so the letter H is repeated for better poetic effect in the next line open the trunk of a tree at all so the letter T the is repeated again and what is the sound of a birch's bark so letter B is repeated for better poetic effect the next topic is the central idea of the poem uh, the central idea is basically to have fun with the language uh, the poet is uh, used pun throughout the poem and English language has basically lots of words and they spell alike they look alike they sometimes sound alike and they have got different meanings so it can be used for fun and make uh, you know and uh, the reason why I like this poem is uh, because it makes me think and urges me to make my own puns after reading this poem and I have actually made a lot of pun after reading this poem I want to write one for you I can't bear to see a bear bear so this three bear have got three different meaning all right now the other one is the dog barked at the box made of bark alright so have fun guys uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video uh, to make sure that you don't uh, miss any of my future video please subscribe the channel and stay focused I'm going to uh, give you a lot of new poems uh, new uh, chapters going to be covered very soon stay tuned thank you very much